Hello and welcome back to this demo of the Realistic Crusade. This will be a very short video, but I wanted to go over a title I referenced in a Criterion review, but I was finally able to pick up the Arrow UK Blu-ray release of The Incredible Shrinking Man here with the reversible original poster artwork. So this is really just a short companion piece to my review of the Criterion 1100 Spine Blu-ray that just recently came out based on a new uh, 4K uh, Universal Pictures restoration. So this is the older master that uh, some people do prefer because unfortunately the new uh, master, while it is a superior source master, uh, has been subjected to some degraining and some sort of smoothing effects, which is unfortunate because it unfortunately mars the otherwise excellent transfer. But this also has an exclusive Tim Lucas commentary, which I was very curious to check out. Some people prefer it to the uh, Tom Weaver track on the Criterion release. It's also got a booklet with a Kim Newman essay and some great uh, stills and things and the extras were pretty much otherwise duplicated on the Criterion release so you're looking at the Arrow release for the older master and for the Tim Lucas commentary and then the uh, Kim Newman booklet essay pretty much in terms of exclusive extras so again this is a reversible sleeve as Arrow likes to do it's always pictured with the alternative artwork on the outside, but being a geek, I automatically flip it around to the original poster artwork. But both look nice. Uh, you know, I do like the new art they came up with, shown here. Here is the booklet essay. Uh, it's it's short in terms of page count, but it covers all the key highlights. And if you've ever read any of Kim Newman's pieces or seen his Talking Head interviews, he is without a doubt one of the great. Uh, personalities to have as a critic on any release in, in either video or print form. And then it goes into a whole artwork gallery showing original press materials and all the poster concepts. And it's actually quite extensive, so I really appreciate it, the fact that they did this and they went into not just the main posters, but some of the foreign posters. And then you can see how the concepts developed. And this film had a number of really great, fascinating advertising concepts that were extremely effective. Uh, in terms of the transfer, they simply say, you know, it was an HD master created it and supplied by NBC Universal. This is seemingly the same master they had for a while. This is what turned up on the Cock Media Blu-ray. This is what turned up. Uh, I, I'm guessing this was advanced on the old DVD, or maybe it was actually struck back then. I'm not exactly sure, because I haven't seen the DVD in a while, and I unfortunately don't own it, so I can't do a direct comparison. But, you know, it doesn't have the the DNR look. It doesn't have the motion smoothing look, but it's got, you know, um, you know contrast that's very different. It is very obviously an older master struck from, I, I don't know what particular source they used, but it definitely was not original negative material. Uh, it does have damage. Damage, does have marks, does have some wear, and uh, it is very noisy, but it's not all green. However, it does have a more ostensibly pleasing look in terms of the green structure as compared to the 4K Master, which has been, again, denoised in various ways. But you can't discount the fact that the 4K Master is from original materials and is far superior in every other regard. The trouble is it's been subjected to so much tomfoolery that it only advances in terms of the base stability and other factors uh, as opposed to this who knows how old it is older uh, HD era master with a lot of baked in problems. I will also say this has the little splice uh, or I should say jump cut in the famous spider sequence that was missing on all older prints. It happens on all old on all old video releases prior to the Criterion release. So of course the Criterion release is the only 100% fully complete version of the film on home video because it doesn't miss those frames in the climax of the climactic spider fight. Uh, this really great little gory bit in the very end that will uh, is one of the great nightmare fuel moments for any child seeing this film. So that's another factor to take into account. Uh, the audio is also not as good as the Criterion because it is uh, a bit more... Um, the, the high end is a bit more tinny and a bit more screechy and does have there is some baked in damage and things uh the eq is a lot better on the criterion but um even though i think the criterion is better than the uh, audio on the universal master it is still not as good as the laser disc i have here which is a bit more natural sounding so i have the i think the laser disc is still the best sounding version of the film on video and then the criterion is uh, in the number two spot and then you would get to the old universal master as represented on the Arrow and Cockmeda Blu-rays and, of course, the DVD as well. 
So really uh, what you're wanting to look at this for is if you can't stand the sort of very soft look of the Criterion and you're willing to put up with all of the damage and the old master hallmarks on the Arrow release, which I really can't recommend because outside of the soft looking appearance, the Criterion is far superior and it is uncut in the Spider sequence, which again, all old releases are missing those frames. But uh, so we go to the exclusive extras. So you have the booklet piece, all the other pieces, uh, the, the featurettes, the, uh, the documentary on Jack Arnold, those are all on the Criterion release and the Jack Arnold documentary is actually extended on here. So um, that, that's pretty much a washout. So really it's just the Tim Lucas commentary. And I had meant to get this back, you know, years ago when this was the major Blu-ray release. And then I figured if I ever found it for cheap, once I'd gotten the Criterion, I might pick it up for the Tim Lucas commentary because I love his tracks. He's a great commentator. And so lo and behold, this copy popped up for cheap. Now I wish I could say the commentary is, uh, you know, completely devoid of information covered in the Tom Weaver track, but it, it does cover a lot of the same ground. However, I still think it's a rewarding listen. And of course, it was done first. And, you know, anytime you have multiple commentaries covering the same thing, they're going to go over some of the same ground. Uh, I, Tim Lucas is coming at it, you know, from the perspective of not just being a critic, but having very vivid memories of seeing it in the theater as a child and being absolutely terrified, which is hysterical to hear and very endearing. So uh, he comes at the perspective of this film being a 50s science fiction master masterpiece and something a bit more special than the typical genre film which is really the the what what the film truly is it is a a, a gem of the entirety of the uh, science fiction genre in the 1950s and it is a bit different it has special qualities and I went over all this uh, when I did my criterion review so I definitely will uh, I do highly recommend you if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the film and Richard Matheson's original novel, uh, go and look at my Criterion review, which I'll also link in the description below. But um, so again, it's covering a lot of the same ground, but uh, Tim Lucas is definitely a fan of the film, whereas Tom Weaver uh, has, like you know, most of us, seen the film a thousand times. And so in, in the midst of a really informative track, uh, does sort of poke fun at it here and there, which some people haven't liked. So I know the Tim Lucas commentary might be preferable to some of those who, who don't like the, the sort of inherent snarkiness that sometimes is in some Tom Weaver commentaries but um, I think they're both great tracks but uh, they, they do sort of cover the same ground so it's really the, the different perspective and uh, Tim Lucas's historical background with the film that uh, you're getting more from from this track and he does quote some of Tom Weaver's research and interviews because you know he's done so many that pretty much everybody winds up doing that at some point or another so again this was done first years ago and so uh, when Tom Weaver came along to do the Criterion track obviously it's going to cover a lot of the same ground so I can't exactly recommend the Arrow release now that we have the Criterion version. Uh, if you're a diehard fan of the film or you managed to find the Arrow release for cheap like I did, it's a cool additional piece to have and the commentary is really nice and you get the poster art and the Kim Newman booklet essay. Uh, but again, I don't think the audio is as good and it's an older master that's not as good as the new restoration. Uh, the real problem is the new restoration has been hit with some uh, some DNR, so uh, that plus the encoding means it's unfortunately not much more detailed than the over-sharpened old master, and that's something else I should say. This is an old Universal master with all their old hallmarks of over-sharpening out the wazoo, so that's another reason why this is deceptively sharper looking at, on first glance, but when you start looking at it more closely, you'll notice that you know everything is far sharper than what it should be. Uh, that causes problems everywhere else. The contrast is, is definitely uh, also an issue. It's just an older master. It really is, and it definitely shows its age in, in both picture and sound. So uh, I know some people went out and got this after looking at the Criterion and not liking the look of it, and some people now swear by the old Arrow release, but I can't agree with that because this is an older, inferior master. So the Criterion release is still the way to go, but the Arrow will get you the uh, one or two little exclusive goodies, and you know if you can get it for cheap, it's cool to have both. But I will say, ultimately, that neither release is perfect, unfortunately. And also, once again, even though I know I say this a lot and I sound like a broken record, I do think the Laserdisc has a better sounding audio track. Uh, it's less manipulated, uh, there's no real EQ going on or anything like that. And even though itself, it's got some noise and it's not quite a perfect, fully restored source, I think the more hands-off approach means that it comes across better than even the Criterion presentation of the audio. 
So that's all I had to say about the Arrow release of The Incredible Shrinking Man. Uh, if you've not seen my other review of the Criterion Blu-ray, uh, please check that out. I talk a lot about the film, its production. I talk about Richard Matheson's original novel, which itself is fantastic and a masterpiece of the genre. Uh, both the film and novel go about the same story in slightly different ways, and uh, I think you really should experience each if you've only experienced one. They, they very much work in tandem along slightly slightly different paths where they diverge, but uh, the overall themes are, are all there. And the novel actually is far darker in a lot of ways and much more uh, emotionally gripping. And the turmoil is much more obvious because they did, Masson didn't have to deal with the uh, censorship of film in the 1950s, for example. But I, I think they're both essential. And with these great films, there's no point in sticking with just one release when, you know, you have to go through several different ones to try to cobble together everything. And uh, films like this, the really special ones, I don't mind as much uh, looking at all kinds of different copies or, again, tracking down a British Blu-ray for an exclusive commentary. So uh, the commentary is really all you're getting in this release that's, that's really going to be a major draw. And again, it covers a lot of the same ground because it was recorded first and it's using some of Tom Weaver's research anyway. So uh, again... Uh, Grab the arrow if you can find it for cheap and you're a big fan of the film or you like Tim Lucas's commentaries, but otherwise it's it's not exactly essential if you've already got the Criterion. I just wish the Criterion could have added Tim Lucas's commentary as well and not had uh, the degrading going on in the Universal Restoration, because otherwise, uh, if we could have those two factors and have audio as good as the Laserdisc, then it would be perfect, but unfortunately, uh, it's it's got those few drawbacks, so you wind up still having to have multiples, but um, that's just what I do. I collect multiple copies of the same film and scrub through them like crazy, looking for differences and and uh, grabbing every release with different extras just because that's that's what I do. So that's it for my review, uh, my supplemental review of the Arrow UK Blu-ray of The Incredible Shrinking Man. It goes hand in hand with the Criterion release. Um, either release is great. This is a film everyone should see. If you're a science fiction fan and you haven't seen this yet, I hope I've done a good enough job of selling it in this review and my Criterion review. It is one of the truly towering great films of the genre, not just of the 50s, but of science fiction in general. Uh, that goes both for both the film and the novel. It's a terrifying experience, uh, one that is total nightmare fuel for children and adults alike. Uh, there are many themes that only come out on uh, subsequent viewings and viewings as an adult as opposed to viewings as a child. So as always, thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, keep physical media alive, keep your disc spinning, and just hope that you don't someday have to move into a dollhouse.